John Garcia, I hope you're having a great day, man. Welcome into the game in T-Town. We're doing well, Ryan. How about you? Man, I'm outstanding. Outstanding. And uh, not as good as Nick Saban, though. Not as good as Nick Saban because he's had a couple of good days here. Tell us more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the the second level, uh, the, the edge rushers are coming to Tuscaloosa. I mean, you don't have to look hard for it, whether you're, you're recency biased or you're just a casual fan clicking Bama online and looking at the commitment list. Highest rated guy in the class is Chris Braswell, verbal commitment edge rusher out of the D.C. area. Top player in the state, Quandarius Robinson, edge player, committed to Alabama, former Auburn commit. Uh, and then today, newest commitment about 20 minutes ago or so, Will Anderson, top 100 prospect, one of the best in Georgia, picked Alabama over LSU, Georgia Tech, several others, um, and he's another edge rusher. I mean, when, when Des Moines Kennedy, who's, who's another recent edge type of commitment, when he is maybe the worst pass rusher of the commitments, and he had 12 sacks playing 7A football in Alabama, I mean, that's, that's kind of where Bama is right now in pass rushing. He is the worst quote-unquote pass rusher that Alabama has, has brought in in this class uh, right now. That is number number one in the SEC, number two in the country behind Clemson. Uh, but the new guy, Will Anderson, man, he's um, he's what you look for in 2019. 6'3", 235-ish, uh, first step uh, elite, uh, and that's why he's compared to Tim Williams by 24-7 sports. That first step is just, boom, I already have the advantage over you. But, um, man, the more you watch on the kid, uh, he's, he's just easy to really like. Uh, not as, as just, just a pure speed guy. He can come underneath. He can play with some power relative to his size. He plays the run incredibly well. 32 tackled behind the line of scrimmage last year as a junior, half of them for sacks. Um, this kid is, is just in, in a very high-level uh, group of athletes uh, that, that can get after the passer uh, and play in the backfield. And that's obviously what, what this day and age uh, of football is all about. It's about the passing game and countering the passing game with pass rush and coverage. And, and this is another one of those guys that, that it feels like uh, helps you just win football games. All right. On the negative side, there's also been a decommitment. Uh, D. Ricky White, right? Uh, first things, I'd like to thank my father, uh, God, for blessings me with the ability I have today. I'd also like to thank the University of Alabama and Coach Saban for blessing me with the opportunity to allow me to play at their school. With that being said, I will announce that I'm decommitting from Alabama. Uh, D. Ricky Wright, is this just a numbers thing, or is this something that uh, maybe he felt like he was needed somewhere else? Can, can you give us any more here, possibly? Yeah, I think that's kind of the conventional thought, but I'm against that. Um, I think this is just kind of odd timing, you know, decommitting an hour before another player who theoretically plays a similar position makes a commitment. I don't think this is, is related to Will Anderson. I don't think it's related to numbers just yet. Uh, DeRicky's a guy that um, is just is still newer to, to the recruiting landscape and to how much Alabama pushed uh, for him in the spring. So I don't see a change of heart from the, from the Crimson Tide in, in two and a half months back from when they accepted his commitment. Uh, so I don't think this is Alabama initiated. Now, he has been very busy. He camped in Tuscaloosa. He's camped in, up in Knoxville. He camped in Lexington, Kentucky. So I, I don't know how much influence those trips have had on the kid, um, but, but obviously he felt uh, that he needed to take a step back. And, and he's one who, who really, you know, despite being verbally committed, never stopped um, dealing with other schools, whether it be visits, camps, communication, et cetera. So uh, I think he's, He's, he, first of all, he's a high academic kid, good character kid, and I think he's kind of looking at it from a perspective like, well, hey, maybe I shouldn't be committed if I'm still going to take these trips, if I'm still going to do uh, go through the process as if I was uncommitted. So I think there's some, some perhaps some honorability in there from the Ricky's perspective. But I, I think the conventional thought looks at adding a top 100 guy and losing a top 300 guy as, okay, Bama upgraded, but I think it's much more complex than that. And I actually don't think uh, that it's related. So uh, we'll find out more about it. Uh, when kids decommit, I always like to give them a couple of days of space before uh, really trying to figure out you know, what went into it and what's next. But um, as far as I can tell, Alabama is still very much going to be in the conversation for him. And, and I think rightfully so. I, I think he's a guy athletically that can do uh, just about as many things as anybody on the commitment list in terms of versatility. So 
I think that Alabama will remain in play in some capacity for Ricky Wright. But the timing surely uh, is odd and would have suggested that there is a correlation. We're talking right now to John Garcia, BamaOnline.com, 24-7 Sports, National Recruiting Analyst John Garcia joins us quite frequently as we break down. It seems like this month has been very, very busy. Are we seeing a little bit of a point of emphasis for Alabama? Because you look at the, by the state, and I love the breakdown here on the websites, Alabama 8, Georgia 5, Florida 2, Texas 2, California 1, Maryland 1, Ohio 1. But with eight players from the state of Alabama, and we're just now in June, is that a point of emphasis for Nick Saban, maybe reestablishing the state's dominance? You know, I think that's part of it. Um, but I just think the state is, is really good. I mean, the, the state has gotten deeper, it seems like, every year with, with SEC-level talent. It uh, doesn't mean they're all Alabama-Auburn-type kids, but at the top, um, it, it's grown. And I think when you do look in state, some of the most recent gets, I think, are the most important. Obviously, number one player in the state, anytime you get him, it's a big deal, and that's Quandarius Robinson. And arguably the number two player in the state, DeMoy Kennedy, who's the second most recent in-state commitment. You know, both of those guys, former Auburn commitments. So uh, when you're talking about battleground and you're talking about, you know, when when you push, when you go over the top for a kid, I think a lot of those boxes were attacked. Edge rushers, versatility, productive, high-level football, 6A, 7A, and both formerly committed to, to your in-state rival. I think that – some of that to some degree uh, but but again the state is deep you know 20 plus four star types in this cycle usually it's half of that so so naturally there's going to be a bit of a wider net within state lines and a lot of these kids have come to Tuscaloosa and validated I mean Des Moines Kennedy's workout even now that it's been a couple of weeks since he came to Tuscaloosa I'm still hearing about it uh, somebody was was telling me that his vertical leap was threatening the 40 as, as a 210 pound linebacker. I mean, these kids are coming and earning uh, their spots, earning their scholarship offers from Alabama, which is which is incredibly important. Um, and it's not just the in-state kids. I mean, Will Anderson uh, came to camp and, and and showed why he's a top 100 type of prospect, and, and that's why Alabama, you know, put the icing on his recruitment at that point. So I think uh, the combination of the depth in the state and, and these kids maybe validating their status or or increasing their status in a very short order this time of year has all um, compiled into a bigger number of in-state guests. And, and I don't think Bama's done in the state. I think that number could be double digits before all is said and done. John, there's two things. How high do you think this number will go for Alabama as far as total number of commitments? What, what, what do you think is a good target? You know, you always start at 25 and you go from there. I haven't heard too much concrete information to suggest it's going to be one of those that balloons well beyond 25 like we've seen in recent years i think it's going to be you know ballpark right there at the conventional sec mark of 25 now, of course 20 are committed right now so i know what you're getting at you're going to say okay well how in the world are they going to fit in all these positions of need with 20 guys already committed and i think that's where you start to look at the current commitment list uh, obviously directly right departed today but he's not going to be the only one. Um, no matter whether it's kid initiated or Alabama initiated, you expect several other names to eventually uh, create movement on this commitment list. I mean, it, it's really not hard to figure out. Uh, you know, Bama's got four receivers committed, but they're still recruiting several other wide receivers, even though we don't expect them to take more than four. So what does that tell you? Probably going to be some movement. Bama's recruiting additional tight ends, despite having one already committed. Additional movement. The trenches, uh, I think there are three or two defensive linemen, two offensive linemen committed. It, you don't have to be any type of recruiting fan to know that Alabama is going to take many more trench prospects. So, so yeah, there's no quarterback in this class. I mean, there's a lot of indicators that, hey, this thing is far from done. And I think um, I think that's, that's part of the course this time of year. But certainly with Alabama, I, I do expect a lot of movement with the current commitment as Alabama works to, to figure out, you know, the final numbers for the class. But I, I haven't heard anything concrete above that 24-25 member mark, which is sort of conventional um, in the SEC. So, John, what we talked about, I mean, let's, let's go back maybe a month and a half ago when I was saying, a lot of people out there were saying, Clemson's running away with this number one class. 
I guess now Nick Saban said, hey, I wasn't listening to that. Uh, maybe that's part of the, the the conversation of maybe motivating. Listen, he's a competitor. He, he doesn't like getting beat on the recruiting field, the football field, the football room, uh, the draft room of the NFL draft. I mean, he likes to win at everything he does. Somebody didn't tell Nick Saban that he didn't have a chance because does he have a chance now? Yeah, I, I think if that number pushes higher than 25, 26, 27, I think there's a legitimate chance because Clemson typically is more in, in the 20 range. Why? Because they don't let their commits take visits. They don't suffer decommitments. I think it's been five recruiting cycles since they've had one decommitment. No, 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 uh, no, no John, I'll, I'll, hold, on, hold, hold on just a minute. I, they, <laughs> they don't allow their commitments to take visits? It is understood when you commit to Dabble Sweeney that, hey, I'm committing to your program, therefore I will not take any more visits. That is basically sold up front to any prospect considering a Clemson commitment. And, yes, this includes five stars. I actually was just talking to one recently. I'm not going to name him. I was talking to a five-star recently committed to Clemson who said that, yeah, I mean, they, they reinforce that before you commit, no matter how highly coveted you are. So, in theory, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Ross, all these guys um, heard the same pitch. And, and since then, um, they really haven't suffered a decommitment. A lot of people point this uh, as the Deshaun Watson rule. He took a very secretive late official visit or unofficial visit to Auburn right before signing day when he was committed to Clemson. And um, apparently the story goes that uh, nobody knew about it until the visit was over. And then Clemson found out about it. Obviously, it worked out for them. They still got to Sean Watson. They got their national title, all of that. But apparently the, the feeling of finding out that your commit took another visit, which sounds crazy today because it's so, uh, so typical and popular, but that feeling, that, that moment, was apparently not um, the most shining for Dabo and company. So at that point, they began to kind of restructure how they approached the recruiting process. And they've successfully been able to say, hey, when you commit to Clemson, you're done. No more visits elsewhere, nothing like that. And this five-star I was talking to recently is wanting to take a visit, but um, he's probably not going to because out of respect for what he had already agreed toward so that's that's John, the fine line you play but if you're Clemson you're one of the very few in position where you can actually do something like that and it could work all right so John I want you to take the recruiting analyst well it's kind of hard to take that hat off because you use your experience and you help understand helped us understand do you like that rule I mean I mean like, like I mean you're a former collegiate player John uh you know what it's like to be recruited do you like that I mean because it's the first I, time I, I've heard of it I, I, know, I hate it it's I appreciate its authenticity and that they do stand on it. So I appreciate that it is upfront and known. Um, but at the same time, you know, I couldn't imagine being 17 and being, you know, talk, talking to Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney and Jimbo Fisher and all these great coaches every day pretty much and saying, hey, once you pick this one, you can't talk to those and visit those anymore uh, because of the circumstances that change. Now, as Clemson recruits more – on more of an elite level, uh, you would expect that to that line to blur just because of the odds of, of dealing with, you know, over five years, that's, that's over 100 teenagers that you've told, hey, don't make other visits, and they agree. You expect one or two eventually to, to go against that. But um, until then, I, I just think that's the way it is. And then that's part of the reason why a lot of these elite kids who probably already know they're going to Clemson are still uncommitted because they know when they do commit, that's it, if it is Clemson. So I, I do think that it could kind of prolong the inevitable for some of these kids, but um, it can really, you know, it, it can really limit them uh, on the other hand. So I, I see both sides here, but Clemson, to their credit, is very public about it, as much as publicly possible with recruiting, and they're very upfront about it. So it's kind of one of those, you know, you're our kind of kid or you're not. Um, and, and obviously it's worked for them over the last few years. Wow. Okay. Hey, I'm I'm learning every single day, man. I'm 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 a, I, I, first time I've ever <laughs> heard of this. Other schools are copying them too. Other schools are trying to do it now too. I think Michigan has started to do that. Um, a couple of other schools are are trying to follow that path, and which makes sense, right? National title teams, people follow their path. You know, Georgia, LSU, for years have followed the Alabama model, uh, and now other schools are beginning to follow the Clemson model of recruiting. So it's really going to be almost like two big groups um, in in five years. Two big groups of schools. Hey, do you recruit the Bama way 
or do you recruit kind of the Clemson way? And, and I think people so are Alabama to doesn't kind do of this. But out. as far as your knowledge, they don't they don't do this, right? They they don't care where you go. Oh no, no. I mean, they uh, the last time I talked to a kid about it, they you know they said that Alabama was aware that he was taking visits elsewhere, but they weren't too worried about it, and they certainly don't discourage it. They want kids to be thorough because look. Alabama's going to be thorough, and that's the difference, right? It's one of those pick-your-poison. Would you rather go to a school that says, hey, you're done once you commit? But they also have to honor that on, on their end. So if you have an injury or you your performance changes or maybe you grow out of a position, now Clemson supposedly is not going to say, hey, your scholarship is gone. Alabama, on the other hand, hey, if things change, Alabama will change. So it's kind of like you shop, we shop all at the same time, which is why Bama – puts such a heavy emphasis on senior evaluations. Another reason why I think this current group of commitments can and will change. Um, so I, I just think it's two different philosophies. You shop, we shop versus you commit to us, we commit to you, and that's it. So some people will, you know, it's, it's a preference kind of thing. Um, competitors typically lean uh, towards the Alabama side a little bit more. But, again, um, a lot of kids would love to reserve a spot at Clemson right now, and, and you can't really blame either side. So it's just really – it's truly two different paths to success because obviously these are the top two college football programs in America over the last half decade, and, and their recruiting is, is the literal foundation of that. So it's, it's kind of an interesting case study to, to see every day. John, what's next for recruiting? I mean, do you, do you think it's going to be a busy week? I mean, you know, like it, I, I know we got you on Monday. I mean, is it going to be so busy that we may have to ask you to come back on Friday? I mean, what, what, do you, what kind of week is this going to be? You think it's a little bit calm, or, or do you think there's adding <laughs> to this? You know, never, never against something like that. Look, I mean, this, this is the first year of summer official visits, right? So this is the last week that that can happen. A week from today, the dead period kicks in. And um, in typical Alabama fashion, they're going to wrap up with maybe the hot, most high-profile visitor that, that they've had this year with Kendall Milton, one of the top running backs in the country, official visit slated uh, for this weekend. So, yeah, Bama would love to – to get him in the fold uh, to pair with, with the top in-state running back that they have committed in Roy Dell Williams. But you never rule out um, some spur-of-the-moment type stuff with Alabama. They, they do still have camps going on. They are still hosting kids. Uh, Four-star receiver Jaden Thomas was just on campus. I just saw him tweet out uh, some photos in Alabama gear. So while the official visits are usually relegated uh, a little bit more towards the weekend, um, there's still a lot going on during the week. And it's the last week before the dead period before kids can visit uh, until the end of July. So there's about a month that's going to go down uh, at the end of June into July where kids really can't do anything in terms of in-person contact, on-campus visits. So you always expect Alabama to finish kind of the open period strong. They just had some five stars on campus in the last week, so you expect some more uh, to return. So, uh, well, and, never and, a and then Alabama also got a uh, grad transfer too, right? Uh, or, or at least a transfer in London Dickerson. Maybe not a grad transfer, but a guy that uh, – as we're very familiar with, and I know you are, with the recruiting side of things, he's coming to Alabama, according to uh, the website that I'm reading. I uh, believe – was that, didn't Bama Online break that story last night? Oh, yeah, I, no, it's done. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. He's going to Alabama. That's, that's complete. Um, yeah. And he is, he is a target. grad transfer, yeah. so he's eligible immediately. Right, and, and that's, again, um, we, we just talked about it earlier, right, with the Will Anderson commitment news. Uh, the, the game is, is the passing game and the protection of that passer – versus the counter and um and this is another guy to help with that offensive line depth uh what i like about this for bama is that he's a versatile guy play guard play tackle has already uh put in some some high level experience um at the power five in the acc um and then for for the kids for landon riddled by injury over the last few years so now kind of he gets a fresh start new medical staff new everything um and, and he can kind of hit the ground running as much as possible no preconceived notions there um, at Alabama. So I think this is a great situation for depth. And, and again, if the goal is getting the best five or the most talented linemen, you know, on the field together, he can fill one spot, which is, I think the best part of this, uh, really for both sides, because it'll push the competition. And obviously, um, it'll, it'll ensure you a little more insurance, uh, there. Um, if, if something happens, should he not win a starting spot or should he not, uh, maybe compete as much as, as we would think uh, at this point. So I think it's a win-win for both sides there. You, you, it's pass rushers, offensive linemen, defensive backs. You really could never have enough. So uh, this is big for Alabama, as big as, as any of these recent verbal commitments, in my opinion. 
Hey, John, I took you a couple of minutes long, man. I always appreciate your time. I always enjoy the conversations, man. It took a lot to kind of get caught up today with everything on the recruiting. You're our go-to guy, college football recruiting analyst. You can connect with him on the Twitter uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's tweeting about stuff that involves uh, Alabama, the SEC, and college football. John Garcia underscore junior, BamaOnline.com. Him and Hank South uh, team up to provide you great recruiting coverage, 24-7 sports, Yellowhammer 247 as well. John, as always, thank you so much, man, for being a part of the show. Hope you have a great week, man. Always a pleasure, Ryan. Thanks for having me.